Smart Farm's second video. Today we will be talking about something that is perhaps unconventional to talk about in farming circles. I don't think I've ever heard a farmer talk about time management, and for many farmers it may be a boring thing that they see as unnecessary. And that does have a reasoning behind it. Why should I spend extra time trying to figure out how to use my time when I could just use my time in the first place. It's also not very hands-on and many farmers get into farming or stay in farming for the hands-on outdoorsy aspect of the work. But this reasoning begins to break down when we apply it to reality. If we don't take time to figure out how to use our time, we begin to mentally juggle a lot of things around in our heads. Most of the time, there are so many things to juggle, uh, something undoubtedly gets lost, uh, especially on a farm. So then later on, you come to think of something that you totally forgot to do. Uh, especially with the type of farming that we do here at Farmsland, where so many operations are going on at the same time, it is imperative that I personally write things down and assign dates to specific, to specific jobs so that I can get everything I need to get done, done. Today we will be looking at the way I personally manage my time. The purpose of this video, however, is not to say that my way of time management is the best. Rather, it is to provide ideas for you uh, as how to improve your time management strategies. First off, I would like to begin with a quote from one of my favorite philosophers, Lucius Seneca. To his friend Lucilius in his On Saving Time, Seneca states these incredibly poignant words. Make yourself believe the truth of my words, that certain moments are torn from us, that some are gently removed, and that others glide beyond our reach. What man can you show me who places any value on his time, who reckons the worth of each day, who understands that he is dying daily? The major portion of death has already passed. Whatever years lie behind us are in death's hands. Therefore, Lucilius, do as you write to me you are doing. Hold every hour in your grasp. I love these words because Seneca illustrates the brevity of time. It points out how important it is for us to manage our time well so that we can have the most of our lives. To conscientiously think about how we are living because we are getting closer and closer to death each day. Switching from philosophy to methodology, the first place you need to go when planning out your time management strategy is objectives. Objectives are like the big goals that you want to, want to accomplish. And uh, what I do is I set up all of my year's objectives on the left side of my whiteboard. And a good way to plan out big goals is thinking about what you want your farm to look like at the end of this year. And then all of those things that you want to change or you want to be doing at the end of this year, those are automatically defined as your objectives, whether or not you realize it yet. And so these are mine. And I'll give you some examples. Um, I organize them in the categories. And so at the top, I have research because I do a lot of research. I have marketing, expansion, and this, these are things like what animals am I adding to my farm that I can make money off of uh, this year or next year. Uh, records, so improving financial records or breeding records or something like that. Uh, in fact, uh, just to give you examples of, of this category, the two I have on here are, are improving financial records and beginning pasture records. And then lastly, efficient, efficiency. And these are things like, um, going from feeding bunnies pellets to completely grass-fed bunnies between the time they are weaned and the time I sell them or slaughter them for meat. Uh, then I also have decreased grain feedings 
of goats and how to accomplish that. That's going to be hopefully next month's video is intensive pasture management with goats. But um, so this kind of gives me an idea of what I need to be working toward. Okay. And then also thinking really, really big picture, you kind of need to be thinking, where do I want to be in the next few years? I have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, and a 15-year plan. A uh, five-year plan <clears throat> I'm gradually working toward uh, by systematically putting things in place uh, managerially, if that's a word, and saying, okay, this year I'm going to accomplish this, 2021 I'm going to accomplish this, 2022, this, 2023, and so forth. Now, in keeping with that idea, over here on my right side of my whiteboard, I have my 2021 objectives. And so these are things that are kind of vague. They're very broad for right now. These are a little bit more specific. These are broad because at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish these things. And so I'm not going to put a lot of effort. This is just like giving me a vision of where I think I want to be. And it helps me accomplish them if I'm able to. So some of the, the things on this list are getting cows, getting sheep, um, improving weeding times. So basically decreasing how much time I weed my garden. Uh, and then a few research things, getting honeybees. And so with this, uh, specifically my yearly objectives for this year, it's important to systematically set up how am I going to accomplish these goals, okay? So it's, any task is easier if you keep breaking it down into piecemeal and taking bits and pieces and gradually accomplishing one and then one piece and then the next piece and you keep adding on to the puzzle until you, you eventually have this beautiful tapestry. And uh, also, it's important to have examination periods and re-examination periods to see, okay, these are my objectives for a year. How well am I doing at meeting these objectives? So that's the next, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, examination periods. The way I set up examination periods for myself is by dividing the year into eight sections, seven of which I call septets, uh, which is a word for collection of seven. Each septet is a collection of seven weeks where six are spent working and the last week is spent resting and organizing my objectives for the next septet. Seven septets equals 49 weeks, and because there are 52 weeks in a year, this gives me three extra weeks. I use these as a vacation time. Vacations are always different for a farmer uh, than for anyone else because we still have to take care of animals and plants. But anyway, this vacation time is put during January as that month has the least going on during it. So here's my calendar. <clears throat> it has some pretty cows on the front. It's a... Uh, North Carolina Cattlemen's Association calendar, if you remember. <clears throat> but you can see the first few weeks of January from the 1st until the 17th is marked out as a vacation period. And then you see Septet 1, there's going to be uh, seven Septets in a year again. That is started. That started on January 18th. And I start my weeks on Saturday, and that's just me. I, uh, that's the way I work. It's better if my weekends are Thursdays and Fridays um, because of farmer's markets and church. And I work a lot on Saturday and Sunday, and so it's really... If those were the day, two days I took off, it wouldn't really be days off. It would just be working. Um, so, so that's the first septet. And then we can go on that last seven weeks uh, until February 29th. And that is a Sabbath week. 
And so each week, or excuse me, each septet is again is divided into six weeks, with during which I work, and one week, which is the seventh week, uh, I rest, and I basically don't do anything except maintenance on the farm. Uh, right now, I am in septet five. I'll show that to you. And next week is my Sabbath week. Well, I'll, I'll rest. And really, resting is different for me, or at least I think of it differently. So when I think of resting, I don't think of just like lazing around, although, you know, to be honest, I do that. Um, but it's really about recharging through uh, getting certain disciplines back in line. So if you think about it, when you're working, sometimes you just get so frustrated because you have all these things going on that sleep schedules kind of deteriorate and either you, get, you don't get too much sleep or your circadian rhythm gets off. And uh, set these rest weeks, these are times where you can get back on your circadian rhythm uh, and get a lot of sleep. And basically, uh, you recharge your energy so that you can work extremely hard uh, over the next six weeks. Another thing is research. So I also try and do a lot of research. I read scientific articles on what I work with. So specifically for me, that will be things like photosynthesis, uh, weed science, which is the study of how to prevent weeds in a garden or in a pasture, um, companion planting studies, stuff like that. Uh, getting an understanding of how I can better run my farm. I like to read a lot, so I do that. And then also emotional recharging. And so part of that might be lazing around, but it also will be exercising by going and hiking at a park, um, going to visit a beach or a museum. Of course, it's COVID, so it's hard to do that during this time. But you know, anything that you can do to emotionally recharge you is good too, because farming takes a lot out of you. So resting isn't being lazy. It's actually purposefully recharging yourself. And that's a much better term to use uh, because you're still doing stuff. It's If you sit around uh, during your rest week and don't do anything, that's actually going to be really bad because it's going to set up these two extremes where you work really hard for six weeks and then you just do nothing for one week. And is you're not getting your mind prepared for the next six weeks if you're doing nothing. If you do nothing for one or two days, it's fine. But if it's going on for the entire uh, nine days with uh, your septet, your Sabbath week and your two weekends on either end of that, it's, it's just not going to be good for you. Now, during that resting time, in addition to recharging myself emotionally and physically, I'm also going to be planning out my septet objectives for the next septet. <clears throat> now, the septet's objectives and the yearly objectives must not be confused. The septet's objectives are systematic means of accomplishing the year's goals, just as the year's goals are systematic means of accomplishing the five-year plan's goals. And it's kind of like a Russian doll where you keep pulling off the or opening up the dolls and then there's another smaller doll inside. That's what time management is, at least in my understanding of it. Uh, for instance, one of my yearly objectives for 2020 has been to decrease pellet feeding of my brood does. I am accomplishing this by setting up cages inside the brood hutch where they can hop out and eat grass grown in the garden boxes. At the beginning of the year, I had garden boxes I had designed the year before, and these garden boxes were growing ryegrass. The next step was to build the cages to go around them. The step after that was to provide a proof of concept 
where I let one dough out to forge in the garden box. And once that worked, my objective for this past septet has been to design new and better garden boxes so that they can be set on rotations. I accomplished that goal, and next septet's objective will be to study the defects of the rabbits grazing on the plants. So as you can see, I'm slowly building a successful strategy for accomplishing this yearly goal by using septet objectives as building blocks. So again, like I said, the last week, the Sabbath week of the septet is an examination or re-examination period. And a metric that I use in order to show how well I accomplish goals um, are these two things. So you can see, uh, the past, here's the past septet, and I have efficiency of all the objectives, and last, last septet that wasn't very good, it was only 58.3%. I marked that as poor. And then I had efficiency per week. So again, with that Russian doll analogy, that five-year plan, year plan, septet plan, I also have objectives per week. And I examine, examine how uh, well I did over the, the entire septet and per week. And I think, did I try and do too much? Did I try and do too little? And trust me, I never try to do too little. It's always trying to do too much. And with that, I, I can see last time, I just did not have good time management. Uh, I set up a lot of objectives, but, uh, and, and on that side, the paper side was good. I just didn't have good time management in, in practical application. And so I got low scores. Now right now, it's, it's average at 77.7% efficiency for, uh, per week. And I have not calculated uh, 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 over to septet yet. It's something. Last time I checked, it was like 51.2%, and that was halfway through septet. But uh, to show you how I organize my weekly objectives, so you probably saw these behind me when I was sitting in my chair in front of my desk, but these are all my little post-it notes, and this is the method I or used to organize my weekly objectives. And you might can't see it, I have color-coded some of them this week, and that's just an experiment. And color codes are my method of assigning days to specific tasks. And, but anyway, once I uh, complete a task for a week, I cross it out. One of these tasks is creating a YouTube video. Uh, one is cutting hay, uh, one is building a chicken tractor, it's a new experimental design, I'll probably make a YouTube video about it in the future. Um, moving goats, and there's a bunch of stuff. There's a maintenance post-it note, which is this one, and that is stuff that I'll do every day, or um, consistently every week, so taking height data, moving goats, which I do every day. Uh, irrigating, which I do every day, stuff like that. You gotta be careful about assigning specific tasks to specific days for the reason that um, you can get very bogged down. And if you don't, if you, if you aren't careful, you're going to make yourself so confined to a specific time management strategy that you're not gonna be able to fix problems when they happen. Because problems will just pop up out of nowhere. One day, a goat will get out and you're gonna to have to fix the problem, the issue with the fence of where it got out. You're gonna to have to spend maybe several hours doing that. You might walk over to the tomatoes and they're just randomly dying. Uh, they're not randomly dying. You probably just did not see the issues that were showing and now it's happened, but you gotta fix that. You gotta fertilize them, you gotta water them, or do whatever you have to do. Uh, and if those problems arise and you're just like, no, I gotta do what's on my list, 
you're not going to be able to be a good farmer because you're going to be too confined to what's on paper rather than to reality. Uh, most of this is artificial. And you got to understand that. And it's just a better method of understanding how to do things efficiently. But it's not reality. Uh, and that is why I don't even though I do specific daily objectives, it's more of just me trying to efficiently organize everything, but I'm not going to create some efficiency score every day because I'm just, I don't think it's necessary. I think that's too limiting. One important thing to remember is that objectives are not all created equal. Some are vastly more important than others. Some have time constraints upon them. So, if you need to do them, you need to do them in a specific time, a range, like a specific month or a specific few weeks in the year. Others have absolutely no time constraints. You can do them whenever you want. And so there's like hard deadlines, like realistic deadlines, deadlines that apply to reality. And then there's the deadlines that we kind of artificially create. Uh, Stephen Covey, in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says that the next level of time management will be when people start prioritizing tasks. Uh, and in keeping with that idea, I have actually started to do that for the first time this September. And so I have A's, B's, C's, and D's. And they're all color-coded except for D's. A is red because they're the most important. These are the things that if nothing else gets done during the septet or during a week, I need to get these things done. Uh, they are my most important things. So the thing, if you look through, build the goat and donkey, the goats and, and donkey, a sh shelter, that's pretty important. Um, planting the fall garden, that's pretty important. Uh, new garden boxes, that's for a whole rabbit uh, brood dough contraption that I'm doing. That was for me very important for the septet. That's one of my main objectives. Uh, it corresponds to a yearly objective of decreasing uh, how much feed I uh, give my brood does. So that's an A objective. Then we have B objectives, and I had them marked in green. And these are things that, if I have time, I'll do them. And it's really good to do them. I think, I think they're great things to do. Um, at the end of the day, if I don't get them done, I feel bad, but at least I got the main things done. Then I have my C's. The C's are, I don't care about getting them done. If I get them done, the septet, that's great. If I have extra time, then everything goes well. And I mark them in blue. And the last uh, category of prioritization is D. And the Ds are like small honeydew list items uh, that there's no urgency about them whatsoever. I don't even put them on my whiteboard. I have a list on my phone. And if I have any extra time at the end of a week, which I never have had that happen, but if, it, if this mythical extra time ever becomes a reality, then I will look through my D objectives and knock a few of them out. There are things like I have a board that's broken on a chicken tractor that doesn't have to get fixed, but if, if I'm able to fix it, then I'll fix it if I have any extra time. So how do I mark objectives that are time sensitive? Well, I put a little dash beside the, the letter, and that tells me that, okay, this one actually, there's a time constraint on that. And so, um, so getting turkeys, I had to get them between June 15th and June 19th. That's when they were dropped off at the post office. And so you see I have my letter right here. I have a dash beside it indicating that it is, there's a time constraint put on it. It's an A, so that means it's 
the, one of my most important objectives, and then I have the time range at the end of it. Then I have ducks, uh, I'm getting them this week, July 21st to July 23rd. Quill, I got them on June 26th. All of them are restrained by me. So I did not understand the importance of time management until I took a course on it last summer for my master's program. After that course, I began applying it to my farm work and I feel considerably less stressed and more focused on what I want to do. I hope some of these explanations of how I personally go about my time management helps you in accomplishing your farm tasks. Lastly, a word about my videos. For this video, I did not include a true intro and will not include a true outro. For me personally, I regard these as superfluous when watching every YouTube videos myself. However, I do recognize that these can have aesthetic value to others. I purposefully left this video without an intro so that you as viewers can compare the beginning and end of this video with the previous one and decide which method you enjoy best. If you prefer an intro with videos of our animals and plants, please let me know and in my future videos I will include them. But until next time, goodbye.